Humanoid Nation. Today I will review the Family Matters entire season. Well, not the entire season. I will give out my thoughts about the whole Family Matters dynasty. And McDuffin is homeless. Yes, that's McDuffin in the background if you're not surprised by now. I live on his couch. Not really, but... Technically, maybe, yes or no. But anyway, on to my review of this Family Matters I used to love this show as a kid growing up. I forgot everything about it since I was a kid. And now as an adult watching this, I gotta say, holy shit, they treat Steve Urkel like utter shit. But enough of that, I'll go into detail about each and every character on this. So let's start with the main man himself. Reginald Bell Johnson, AKA Carl Otis Winslow. The main man of the show is the family man of the entire season, Carl Winslow. I gotta say, this man's a pretty cool character, except for some certain shit that he does. First off, let me just say that Carl is a fucking sexist. Yes, I said it. He's an awesome father, but he is a sexist. Why? Like that one episode where he goes like, Eddie was mad that he uh, lost to his sister Laura because she beat him in bowling because she's a girl. Carl says like, it's the 90s. Women can do that to us men. Ten minutes later, his wife beats him in bowling. And he gets all pissed off and wants a rematch. What happened to all the other shit that he was talking about be way before? So women are allowed to beat you as long as you're not your wife, huh? Way to go, Carl. Way to go. Maybe a sexist, but he is a damn good father. Because uh, the first time Laura went out on a date, you would think that any other father in the 90s would like lose their shit over that. It's like, no, my daughter's not going on a date. Or like basically go up to the guy and threaten him because he's a cop because he can shoot him. But no, he's all cool and shit. I never saw that in any TV dad in the 90s. Boy Meets World, Corey's dad lost his shit when uh, the little sister went on her first date. Carl Otis is also a suck up. Yes, he is. He sucks up majorly to all his bosses. Oh my God, does this guy ever suck up? Is there not just one scene where this motherfucker doesn't like kiss ass? It's like, yes, Captain Savage, you are the best. Yes, I like fishing, as long as it's with you, sir. Laughs at their stupid jokes. My God, man, show some restraint, holy shit. Also, is it just me or could Carl Winslow basically shoot Steve Urkel in the first season? He has a gun, he's a cop, he can get away with murder if he wanted to. Also, why the fuck doesn't he change the key? Because in the first season, Steve comes into the door unannounced and Carl said, like, I'm, I swore I changed that lock. And Steve says, I made an extra key for myself. Why don't you change the locks then? You never thought of that the entire season run? On to the next person. Kelly Shigan Williams, a.k.a. Laura Lee Winslow. I'm going to say this right now. She's a very selfish bitch. She wants things her ways, and she treats Urkel like utter shit every episode. You could tell that in the... Earlier seasons that she did have feelings for Steve, she may not have said it, but you can see the love in there because like she always misses him when she's not around or when she when he, or when Steve got a girlfriend, she was kind of jealous. Tell me that ain't love deep down inside, and they wind up getting married later on and shit. Is it me or am I the only one that thinks during the when she got short hair during her last two runs in the season that she looked really fucking horrible? Laura looked way better with long hair. With her short hair, she just looked nasty is what I gotta say. That wasn't my cup of tea, man. It wasn't my cup of tea. It depends on the woman. Some girls can have short hair and they can pull it off but as long as they don't look like lesbian. Like, well, what if, like, if she's like... If I, but, 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 but if I am going to go for a girl, though, I oftentimes go for the stylish brunette who has nice either curly hair or long flowing straight hair or wavy or something like that. I like girls who have hair. Um, yeah, so. long hair, but not like almost balding hair like no, Laura did. No, I find that a little weird. Because she almost had balding hair during her last run and it was just bad. And the last run of the season of Family Matters, Laura finally decided that she likes Urkel. For the one reason, what's that reason? Is because Urkel changed his clothes. Instead of looking like a dork, he actually looked like an honest looking human being for once. What? That's it? That's all it takes for a girl to like a guy? The constant years where like she, he was chasing after her? With nerd clothes all of a sudden changes his clothes? 
And all of a sudden she notices him. What the fuck, man? What is that all that shit about? Oh, but the last part about it was what really pisses me off about her character. Laura is a two-timer. She's a cheater. Enough said. You know. Think about it this way. When she was with Stefan or Kel, she cheated on that guy twice. One time with Curtis for no goddamn reason. Stefan's in Europe modeling. He's a good guy. He treats her awesomely. Curtis comes along and just basically does shit. And Laura just goes for it. And goes out on a date with him. While her boyfriend is in Europe. The hell? But it doesn't stop there. Once Curtis is out of the picture because he just fucked off in the season later on. She's still with Stefan later on. And then she starts liking Urkel. And Urkel starts asking her out. And she finally says yes for the first time ever. And they go out. And then she kisses him and makes out. And it goes accepts the second date. Stefan is still in Europe. Two times this bitch has cheated on Stefan or Cal. What kind of character is that? A, a bitch. Exactly. That's what I said. When I saw those episodes, I flat out said, what it's a fucking TV bitch. show. Yeah, but in real life, if your girlfriend cheats on you twice and you don't do shit, what do you think about that? There he is, Makrarara, sorry, don't know how to say his name, aka Eddie Winslow. This is another character that I cannot stand, because basically Eddie Winslow is just in love with himself. How the fuck did he live to become 21? Motherfucker chases after girls. Basically, he follows the pussy. The pussy is basically what he wants, and always gets into fucking trouble into it and never learns a damn lesson out of it. Like that one episode where some bitch tells him like, hey, how are you doing in a bar? He goes like, damn baby, how do you be? And then gets like a $2,000 bill and doesn't realize that the bitch is like using him. Lucky his dad is a cop or else for like getting him out of that situation. But still, Eddie Winslow only thinks with his dick. That's what I'm saying. He thinks with his dick. Also, he's selfish. Every episode he uses Steve in whatever situation he wants. And then he says he's sorry to him. And then the next episode, let's forget what happened in the last episode and start from all over again. He never learned his lesson ever and just keeps on manipulating Steve Urkel. Just basically uses him all the fucking time. He may be a selfish and manipulated bastard, but I gotta say, E. Winslow is one standout pimp. He's a player player because he knows how to get women, man, because he has women left and right. Did you just call him a player player? Yes, Eddie Winslow's a player player. Watch the season. He has like five different girls going out with him at the same time. Also, I thought he would have been dead in one episode, the Disneyland episode where he, him and Waldo, his best friend, go do a road trip all the way to Disneyland, but, but they wind up in Canada and they pick up this hitchhiker who happens to be this hot chick. Hitchhikers are crazy. Yes, hitchhikers are crazy. So they pick up this hitchhiker and a woman doing her manipulated ways decide, hey, Eddie, let's go skinny dipping in the lake. Eddie, being the stupid motherfucker that he is, decides, hey, Waldo, come with me. We gotta go skinny dipping with this chick. The chick steals his truck, and they're stuck in the middle of nowhere. What happened to him? Nothing, because next episode, he's back home, safe and sound. No explanation needed. He could have died back there. Y'all know it's true. Also, why the fuck does uh, Eddie uh, take his dates to his parents' house when he was living in uh, his own apartment that one season? Him and Steve went on a double date. At the end of the day, they brought the girls back to his parents' place to make out and shit. Well, Eddie had his own place. Who the fuck takes their girls to their parents' place to make out? That's fucking creepy. Even though I know the main set is the Winslow house, but still, they could have gone back to his place. Which would have made sense, but the 90s don't make sense at all. That's basically it. Oh, and did you know that Eddie Winslow, aka Darius Motherfucker, whatever his name is, was the voice of jazz in Transformers? Yes, look that up. Joe Marie Payton, aka Harriet Winslow. I fucking hate this character. Not the actress, the character. She played the character in such a bitchy way. First of all, Harriet never smiled, always was on somebody's case, had her hands to her hip all the time trying to prove a point, and thought that she was the all that and shit. Bitches cray cray. What now? Bitches cray cray. 
Bitch is cray cray. Exactly. But she doesn't take shit, which was awesome, because that's one character quality I like from her, that she doesn't take shit from evil doers from the show. Yet she thinks she's all that. Rosetta Lenoir, a.k.a. Estelle Winslow. Mother Winslow, Grandma Winslow, whatever you want to call her. She's a cool character, except I find it nasty that they have to make her so fucking horny all the time. A horny grandmother? Who the fuck wants that shit? She's supposed to be hip and all. I like her being hip. Him hip. The hippity to the hobbit. The hip hop hippity. Oh, don't stop. Okay, I'll never do that again. But. She's supposed to be the cool laid back grandma that always everybody loves. But she's so goddamn horny to every goddamn guy out there. It's nasty seeing old ladies do that. Alright, well, ladies, you love it. And they have more of a sex drive than you do. Brighton James, a.k.a. Richie Crawford. Get this one thing straight, this little kid was only used for one thing, it's for his cuteness when he was two years old. Because he was a cute little kid back then. When he actually grew up and got some good lines in him, he actually became useful to the show. But the first three or four years of the show, he was just the baby of the show, with hardly any speaking words, he spoke here and there. But he was just basically there to be cute. Also, he's an awesome dancer. Yet in one episode, he couldn't dance for some reason. Or that episode where him and 3J are like trying to mack on this girl and 3J is like just basically doing the moves and dancing. And then Richie comes along and does his weak ass polka version of the song. What happened to your dancing moves, kid? You were such an awesome dancer back in the earlier episode. Doing Michael Jackson dances left and right. Although he did have an awesome mullet. Bella Hopkins, a.k.a. Rachel Crawford. Best aunt ever. All I gotta say, best aunt ever. What else do you want me to say? Except for the fact that they bloody didn't tell us where she went when she disappeared half the seasons. Like the fourth season was the last episode you see her in a full episode series where like Mother Winslow gets married to Fletcher. And then after that, she's gone for, uh, for like a couple of episodes until like the next season. And they bring her back without no explanation. She just comes from back from the airport for a Christmas episode. She's there for a couple episodes, Disneyland, and then she disappears again. And then winds up coming back two years later. No explanation at all. They don't even say where she went. They could have gave an explanation where she went, where the character went. It's like something, like she went to fucking be a nun or some shit, I don't know. By the way, what happened to Rachel's place? They never did explain what happened to that restaurant. Sean Harrison, aka Waldo Geraldo Faldo. Let's get this straight, he's stupid but funny. He's very comedic, but he's borderline retarded is what I think. I seriously think he's borderline retarded in this show. How he lives day to day in this show, in that character's world, I have no idea. But I'll say what Eddie Winslow said once. Like, he keeps me up at night sometimes, wondering what he does. And he just disappeared that one episode. And they, apparently he said he went to cooking school. No goodbye episode? Shame. The butter shame. They just put him in the letter saying like, Oh, I fucked off. Here you go. Bye. Jamie Foxworth, a.k.a. Judy Winslow. You're wondering who the fuck is Judy Winslow? She was on the first four seasons of the Family Matters and then got fucked over later on. She was the forgotten Winslow. She went inside the house and we never saw her ever again. But also she was never used right, her character. The only time they ever used her in a main plot was two episodes. One was where, like Carl said, Judy was getting C's in her class. You would think they would base an entire episode off that, but no. They say, oh, she has a C, and then they go off. Five minutes later, you see Judy just on the kitchen trying to study hard. Storyline over. Next story. Steve Urkel's doing some shit. And that was the end of the episode. The fuck? Second episode. Yeah, uh. yeah nice. Second episode that she was in that had her prominently was when she was feuding with Richie. The feuding cousins never went anywhere because they were bickering with each other left and right but never went anywhere after that. Basically after that she was in the background all the time and you can tell that the writers did not give a shit about her character. Got little lines here and there and then they completely just made her disappear. Some of you may not know this but what happened to her? Well basically Jamie Foxworth went into porn. 
Yes, you heard that right. Look it up on IMDb.com. She did a couple of porn videos. That's what happened to Judy Winslow when she turned 18. She went off to do the porn business. Yay? Sherry Johnson, a.k.a. Maxine Johnson, a rational one of the group of friends of Laura. She was the only rational one. Plus, she was freaking hot back in the day. I can say I that because I... I can say that because I was her age back in, well, five, eight, five years younger, so I was around 10 when I started watching the show. But still, Maxine was fucking fine back in the day, and you all know it too. She still is too. Michelle Thompson, AKA Myra Monkhouse. First of all, when Myra first showed up, she was extremely horny towards Steve Urkel. My God, was she just that horny. To the point where like she just showed her horniness in front of the whole class in one episode. It's like, good God, woman, keep it in your pants. No, keep it out of your pants. We need you. We're good. You're hot. We like you. We don't bang you. Overreaction. Yeah. No. And how what she saw, I have no idea what she saw in Steve, but it was funny as hell though. And she was freaking fine too. Well, she went from horny until the end of the season where she just became the fucking stalker of the show. Steve broke up with her and she couldn't take it and became fucking crazy and just stalked the shit out of him by putting like- They should be Kirk right? By putting like spy cam in his classes and like watching they be Kirk right? him on Steve cam. That was just a really fucked up episode. Her bed's covered with Steve Urkel shit all over the place. Her walls is covered with Steve Urkel's faith. Bitch be crazy. She tried to sneak onto the NASA space station without a fucking helmet and she would have died up there if no one ever saw her in there. Basically, Myra be, be fucking crazy. Sadly, Michelle Thomas died from breast cancer a month after Family Matters ended. Michelle Thomas will forever be remembered for one quirky character. Orlando Brown, AKA 3J. I call this guy Richie number two, cause he was there just to be cute too, cause like a six year old kid but with player skills. A six year old player player, because he was suave and from the streets, and didn't give a fuck, and he knew how to play the game. Joseph Julius Wright, aka Richie Crawford the first. Remember the first Richie Crawford, the baby from the first season, the original Richie Crawford? Had no lines, was just there to be a fucking cute baby. And then the second season, they got the other kid to do it. I forget his name already. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. But basically, wherever this kid is, he became just, he was just on the show to be cute. Judy Ann Elder, AKA Harriet Winslow II. This was the person that replaced Joe Marie Payton, the original Harriet. Cause Harriet was pissed off that the show was more concerned about Steve Urkel rather than the family matters of the show. So she left midway through the last season and Julianne Elder replaced her as the new Harriet. I gotta say thank God for the new Harriet because at least I can stand this character. Because at least this fucking character showed emotion and showed actually loving emotion. It's not like the old Harriet that just did not look like she loved whatsoever and just didn't give a shit. This Harriet, the new Harriet, actually had emotion, actually looked like she gave a damn about the characters. And actually looked human and wasn't such a bitch all the time. She was a loving mother that was supposed to be like that the entire season. But no, we had original Harriet who was just goddamn awful. Jaleel White, AKA Steve Urkel. Before I get to Steve Urkel, let's talk about his other characters. Myrtle Urkel, fucking hate this character with so much passion, I don't know why. It's basically Steve Urkel but female form, except she's fucking stocks Eddie all the fucking time and never gets the idea that Eddie doesn't want her even to the point where like you think she gets it but no and then just shows up every time she walks into that fucking door I go like oh fuck not Myrtle Urkel god damn just kill that character off and they finally kind of did but not kill her off they made her actually have a brain one time where she finally realized like ah oh, I have to stop chasing Eddie but it took nine fucking years to do that nine fucking years Holy shit! That was too much murder, Urkel. Khalil White as Stefan Urkel, the smooth, sophisticated guy. Am I the only one that thinks Stefan Urkel looks like a ugly motherfucker without glasses? He looks like he's tired, man. He has swag and all that shit, but when he has no glasses, he looks tired. He looks like he needs sleep. He looks like Vince Vaughn and Susan Randon, because they look like they need sleep all the time. Jaleel White without glasses does not look good on him. But hey, 
Apparently the ladies loved him back in the day, Stefan Arkell, because they went crazy every time he entered the room. And lastly, Jaleel White's famous character, Steve Urkel, was brought in eight episodes in after the first season as just a stand-in role. But the character was so popular, people wanted him back, and he just came back and took over the show. You have never seen any other show where like a side character began to take over the show and became his own show. It became less Family Matters and more the Steve Urkel show. Him just destroying shit left and right. Also, I gotta say, the last couple of seasons, his voice was really, really annoying. Especially when they made him sing. Oh God, that was horrible. At least not we forget that he was treated like utter crap back in the day. Not as an adult, I, as I watched this back in the day. I never noticed this, but good Lord, fuck, damn, did everyone just give this guy shit. They didn't even treat him like human, they just treat him like those thing off the bottom of your shoe that you don't give a shit about. Also, Steve Urkel was also a stalker towards Laura when he first loved her in the first couple of seasons. Cause he would follow her everywhere he, she went and she would tell him to fuck off but he wouldn't listen. And literally, he would follow her all around, even to uh, classes that he never took. He would go in there and register just to be with her. Holy shit, guy, hold it back, hold it in your pants. Other thing, Steve is pretty selfish, even when like he's still in love with Laura, but going out with Myra, he says like if Laura gives him the eye and wants him, she's gonna dump, he's gonna dump her and go with Laura. What the fuck kind of guy does that, motherfucker? And she's chasing you, she wants you, Myra wants you, and you don't want Laura. Laura wants nothing to do with you, and you got this other hot girl who wants you, and yet you want Laura. Makes sense, doesn't it? No, not really. The only one that thinks that it's really creepy that when Steve Urkel's sick as a dog that he decides to go to his neighbor's house and crash on their couch for some reason. And then Carl comes home and says like, Steve, what are you doing here? He's like, my parents kicked me out of the house because I was sick and he decides to go to the Winslow's house. Who the fuck does that? That's just creepy. But of all the things that Steve Urkel does, he's a humble guy. He thinks... He doesn't think about himself, he thinks about other people. That's what's best about this character. That's what I like about this character. He tends to think about others all the time. Even though people make fun of him all the time, he wants others to be happy. But anyway, that's my review on the whole Family Matters character development and all that stuff. What did you guys think of Family Matters and all that shit? Anyways, Humanoid Nation, Humanoid Freak Out. Bye!